All right, 3x pitch by metrics here of Al, and we're going to pair him up with Josiah. So I'm sure Josiah would like this. This is, I, this is Josiah from camp. Did a great job of coming in here at 93. So it gave us a good video to work with. Uh, so it's a good comparison for you. He's, um, I had you at, looking at your height. Your height was five or six, um, four, right? Six, four? Yeah, I got you at six, four. Josiah, I think, is six, six. So he's a couple inches on you. Your weight was 223, and his size is 260. So if you move slower than Josiah, that's, I mean, no, better way to put this. If you're going to throw harder than him, you're going to have to move the same and faster because he's moving more mass than you. Okay, so that means more, uh, more energy that he's moving. So we're looking, let's first come up. And go over some of your ground forces that we recorded that day. I had your drive leg at 1,447 newtons. Your and then your landing leg was 1140. Now I did go back here, and I was concerned because your front toes were off the off the plate, so definitely influenced it a little bit. But it's significantly down when it should be going, you know, going up. Um, so definitely concerned why you're not um, either stabilizing which we know you're not stabilizing that which would affect that and you're not um, transferring your energy late we, we want to see your ground forces peak your lateral forces and the drive leg was 83 newtons to 116 so those were uh, you know pretty pretty poor as well and I think it's just going to come down to what we've already been talking about your your force rate of force development like you you have obviously a lot of strength in your body it's just not activating quick enough your spin rate was 1700 rpms with your 80 mile an hour fastball in this pitch your vertical release i think it was 15 inches i still don't know how to read these right <coughs> so we won't go over that so let's follow <coughs> let's follow the footage here you're at 240 frames per second and we're going 144 frames to front foot strike for both of you. Speed is inches per frame. We're going to move at eight frames per click just to get to this a little quicker. <clears throat> and we're going to follow the lower half. Distance from the origin is where the back foot is on the rubber. X, Y position. X is the horizontal measurement from that position. Y is the vertical. In the front positions, <clears throat> the origin is down the middle of the back foot like we see here. Anything to the left in the X uh, position is a minus, and to the right is a positive. So everything's in inches. So as we follow you guys, <clears throat> first we'll go 48 frames. We should be able to compare positions, distance traveled, uh, speeds. Okay, so we can see here his hips 13 inches from the rubber, yours is 14, so you're just ahead of him, which is good. You're 30 inches, 34 inches from the ground, he's 37, well he is. Two inches taller than you, but you're um, three inches lower than him, so you're, you're loading your leg a little bit better than him, which is good. Um, if, even looking here, let's go those 48 frames. We can see what if you're in the posterior chain as well as him or better. Going to 48 frames, so I can see your knee flexion looks to be I'd have to measure it Le uh, less than him so he actually is a little bit more uh, in his quads you're more in your posterior chain but then your your trunk position is more ipsilateral his is more vertical so probably kind of balancing itself out you know I, I would like to see you initially more vertical with your trunk sitting back in your posterior chain all right so let's keep going let's go to 96 frames 96 frames now your 20 your back hip is 23 inches from the rubber to his 22 you're still an inch ahead 29 inches from the ground is 32 so you know he's gotten closer he's pretty much the same on loading because he's two inches taller than you so similarities here i mean even if we look at the back knee 19 to 19 so um 
you have a little bit maybe more towards them, but not much. They're still kind of allowing the knee to kind of push in. I like to keep that knee back, keeps it more stable, and it generates forces later in the delivery. Y'all are very similar in how your, where your front foot position is. I mean, if we looked at the left toe, it's at 67 to 65. Here's a little bit farther out. So that's an indication that you know, well, your hip's one inch ahead, so, you know, but you're still two inches ahead in the foot, so you could be transferring your energy early. You, you seem to be more of in an arm cock position, which is uh, typical of those who might be transferring energy early. So we'll, we'll see that when we get the front foot strike. Let's watch the knee speeds. We're going to go one frame per set or click, and I want to watch when his speeds peak and how high they peak. So this is the one thing Josiah didn't use a lot of leg power. He used a lot of just mass, a lot of momentum. Kept his mass going pretty well because we see this only hitting 0.45 frames per second. Let's follow you. Very interesting though. Look at yours. Climbing now. There it hits a 4.1. I, I like how late it's peaking, um, but the hard thing to tell is it too late because it's still peaking here as we're touching front foot. So it could be a little late for that front leg, a little late for your hips. Um, but like I said, even his wasn't that impressive and also told you because he's 40 pounds heavier, you need to be moving a lot faster than him. So he's... You're peaking your forces later, but could be a little too late. But he's moving 40 pounds more than you at the same speed a little bit earlier before front foot strike. Okay. So, better for him. Let's get to front foot strike. You can see your hip position is 44 inches from the rubber to his 47. So his hips are open more. 88 stride length to 83, so he, he, he got more of a stride length, so he really uses his mass momentum better. So he moved 40 pounds um, a little earlier than you, same speed than you, and it pushed him farther out than you, and your front foot positions are very similar. So just the fact of he's moving a bigger mass as fast as you. So let's look at hip speeds. Here's his 0.56, see where it peaks. Okay, eight. His peaks at 0.82. His hip speeds peaked. Same thing. So still moving. Y'all moving the same speed, <coughs> but hips are a little more open than you. Okay. Um, let's get an indication hip shoulder separation. So let's take it to front foot strike here. Let's take him to front foot strike in the front view. We can see his right hip is at minus 10, so that's 10 inches to the left of that origin, is that right hip. And then the shoulder is pretty much on the origin at zero, so it's 10 inches of separation. Yours is at, your right hip is at minus eight, and your shoulder is pretty much almost to one, but at zero, so he, he's got a little more separation than you, two inches, <clears throat> but also, too, he's got more, a little more contralateral tilt, about two degrees, and you actually look at a negative. If I go, <clears throat> looking at your trunk position, if I go from the chin to the belt buckle, you're you're in, in a negative ipsilateral position. Well, actually, you're in a positive ipsilateral position. Oops, I keep doing it wrong. Let's see. So I'm gonna go to the origin, to the hip. To the chin, and that looks like six degrees. So six degrees and ipsilateral. So we want to be contralateral. Studies show more we are to the glove side at front foot strike to pitch release, up to the point about 25 degrees. Uh, we increase ball speeds. We do increase torques in the arm, but we increase ball speeds. It gets to the point about 25 degrees where we stop increasing speeds and we continue to increase torques. And so front foot position you can see is landing just inside your origin or your, your middle of your your body or actually that's just size yours is landing on 
your stride line, middle of foot, and his is landing just inside it. So he's landing front foot a little closed, and if we look at horizontal abduction, elbow behind the back, he's three inches behind the back to minus one on his toe. You're pretty much at the origin uh, on the throwing elbow into the toe on the origin. So he's got even three more inches of horizontal abduction elbow behind the back than you. So that just goes to separation, separating hips really from forearm. He's at about 13 inches to your eight. Okay. So he's separating better. We can even see it here. Well, if we go back, let's see if we can see it here. Well, maybe the same here. More has to do with the hip position. He's got a little bit more horizontal abduction than you. Um, and the, remember, the shoulder positions were the same, which you can see here. It was really the hip position. So your your shoulders are in the same position, but his elbows behind your, his back more, but in your hips not as open. So that's the difference. So it could be a little too late on your drive. Plus, it was not enough power, not enough speed, you know, for your size would have helped to separate better. Let's look at front foot or front knee stabilization. I think we're going to see a big difference here. If you're at front knee, left knee, you're at 70 inches from the rubber. Let's see how it holds. Drifts one inch, two inch, three inch, almost four, and then starts to come back pretty good. Came back one. So you lost three, gained one. Okay. We watch him at 72 inches from the rubber. Drifts one inch, two inch, three inch, and then hold. So still, both of y'all are considerably losing um, your your stabilization, which would means it would have converted trunk better. But he's a bigger mass than you, so he's having to move it. He's y'all are moving pretty much the same speed from your back knee to your hip and you're stabilizing a little better at the end to bring come back after your three inch loss to one or to gain one um, but it's with less less of a mass so let's see how that converted the trunk so i mean both y'all can improve on that he, that was one of my big things with him is he um, needs to continue to work on leg strength i mean leg power And if we watch the trunk, so all this hip to shoulder separation, front leg stability, back leg drive into front foot, you know, the momentum aspects, all that is to help convert energy in the trunk, which has pretty high. I mean, in my findings, has the highest correlation to to the ball to ball velocity. So if we follow his chin, 53 inches from the rubber, yours is 54. Okay, you can see yours might be a little ahead. If I look at say. You know, let's just go off your your left hip. So you're 54 to your left hip. Now let's go off right hip. Now let's go off left hip. 54 to left hip is 52. So your chin is two inches in front of your left hip. He's 53 to left hip. It's 54. So his inches one. His chin is one inch behind. So there is a little bit of transfer uh, in your trunk, just a little bit more. Uh, most importantly, um, not enough hip, um, not enough open hip position to create more separation and front leg stability, which would support that. But let's watch the chin. So the chin's 53 as we go to pitch release. He goes to 69, so that's 16. Yours is 54. Seventy-four, so twenty. So you had you had more trunk. So you beat him there. Let's see let's see if the speeds were there. He was 0 0.8, Kind of held at four. So up to 0 0.8, held at four. Six. Considerably less speeds in the trunk. Five. Okay. You went farther, which was good. So your trunk is carrying a lot better. You can see it's more in a linear front foot position. It's because when you stabilized, remember we we, we looked at that. I'll see if I can show it here. 
but you can see which was really impressive with you when you finally did activate front foot or front knee which was right here watch this right hip right when it activated or stabilized right pretty much there it's like it locks up it doesn't go anywhere and you can see everything catapulting off that and that really pushed the trunk out well if we watch Josiah's back hip when it that right hip when it blocks and stops you still see movement of it going forward yours literally didn't move an inch so I mean probably look at it here let's watch the right hip it hits 58 inches from or 59 inches from the rubber here and then even starts to go back and 58 59 sits there I think oh, that's after pitch release let's get it right at the moment it hits which is pretty much right here. So the moment it stops 59, it's it's just sitting around 59. Look at that. It literally held at 59.0. No movement in that hip. And if we go back here with Josiah on that right hip, fifth, let's see when he's his blocks. Okay. About here, 57, and it's still drifting. 58, 59, 60. It never really stopped. So that was, even though your hips were moving the same speeds, you blocked it a lot better and it helped transfer your trunk. Problem is up to that point, you didn't have enough speed in your trunk. So it went farther, just didn't go uh, nearly as fast. Half the speed, I think. No, no, two tenths of an inch per frame slower. And if we go back and look at the shoulder speeds, see where those peak. One point four shoulder speeds, where is his peak? Okay, so you had you had more shoulder speeds than him. Let's see when the elbow speeds peaked look like back here. Q five, I believe that was it, huh? No, two still going. Two eight look like it. Okay. Elbow speeds. Your elbow speeds were slower, shoulders were faster, elbows were slower, wrist speeds. Three seven, oh. three seven wrist speeds. Okay, four one. So picked up some more arm speed. You had up more up. Wrist and elbow, he had he had more shoulder, <coughs> more trunk distance, but he had more trunk speed. Uh, he y'all had the same hip and back leg speeds. You had both drifting front legs, but you stabilized yours better uh, late. Um, he had more separation. He had more contralateral tilt. So I think it just comes down to just going through and hitting all those points really with you it's not one thing of course developing more speed in your body to move your body better from because right in the beginning i said he's 40 pounds heavier than you you know we've got, you've got to move you've got to be able to move faster than him because he's pushing less he's pushing more force than you so that means more energy moving up his chain so you would have to pick your speeds up and then you're you're gonna hope tell you the truth that's gonna really remedy a lot of these issues i would just focus on the trunk positions as well keeping those more contralateral um, and then just trying to be quicker and to more force off the back foot, quicker stability of the front leg, which should create more separation. Um, you know, hopefully that also to back more force off the back leg will allow you to transfer your trunk early. And then your hips will stabilize quicker. That'll move your trunk out faster um, and hopefully stay even maybe even give you more distance. You know, then then. You know, I, I'm not even concerned about your arm speed catching up. I think that will be so significant in getting more energy up your chain.